नमस्कार हेलो एंड अ वेरी वॉर्म वेलकम टू सी आई टी एन सी आर टी लाइव फोन इन इंटरक्टिव प्रोग्राम वी आर हियर विद मैथ्स क्लास टाइटल्ड सर्कल्स पार्ट टू इफ यू हैव नॉट वॉच पार्ट वन आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट यू टू प्लीज वॉच इट ऑन आर यूट्यूब चैनल दैट इज एन सी आर टी ऑफिशियल माई नेम इज तनवी खुराना एंड इन दिस सेशन ऑफ मैथ्स फॉर ऑल द नाइन्थ क्लास स्टूडेंट्स यू वॉचिंग आस ऑन पी एम ई विद्या चैनल नंबर नाइन माई नेम इज तनवी खुराना and uh, let me please introduce to you our today's guest and she is mrs beena prakash a very warm welcome to you ma'am thank you tanvi and good evening all my learners good afternoon learners. to you too ma'am uh, ma'am is a senior pgt in mathematics from campion school bhopal and uh, just like i said there are so many mediums through which you can connect with us if you have any questions regarding this topic which is circles please reach out to us you can send us your questions through our phone number which is 8880440559 if you want to reach us through email the email id would be dth.class9@ciet.nic.in so let's begin this conversation and let me ask ma'am uh, ma'am before going to the circles part 2 could you please give us a brief recap about what we did in uh, part 1 and then we'll begin our today's class definitely that means the thing last class actually we started with this chapter circles so whatever elements we had in this term circles we discussed all those like center of a circle radius of a circle arc of a circle chord of a circle segment of a circle these definitions we covered in the last class now let's take up certain properties of these elements to start with the chord we have chord what is chord let me recapitulate chord is a line segment where the end points of the line segment they lie on the circle so you have any two points on the circle join any two points on this circle take up any two points on the circle like this a and b they are two end points of the circle on they are on the circle so they form a line segment ab so this is a chord of a circle so we have one prop that said certain properties of we are discussing certain properties of this chord what is it like this statement says that the perpendicular from the center of a circle bisects the chord that means if we draw a perpendicular from the center of any circle to the chord o is the center of the circle here you can see it then op is the perpendicular drawn on the chord eb op is the perpendicular means angle opb is 90 degree then this line segment op will bisect ab into two bisect means it divides ab into two equal parts so you have this length ap and pb they will be equal right so this is what you have to prove i'll just show through this see we have this line segment bc which is on the circle and we have this line we can see this line can you see this cursor i'm sorry is this cursor clear yes ma'am okay yes ah, this is a line segment which is passing through the center a of the circle fine so b and c are any two points on the line on the circle so if uh, what do you observe here this line ad is perpendicular to bc that is isn't this angle alpha 90 degree the measure of this angle adc is 90 degree then in that case what we read from here is bd and dc they have the same length that is 3.17 3.17 get read that length now if i change this line segment can you see the change in the line segment yes ma'am clear so what you observe with a different length bd and dc still are same this ad is fixed that it is the line segment which is perpendicular ad is the line set line segment which is perpendicular to bc so even that is fixed we have this bc divided into two equal parts so you can have it for any triangle circle that is it is not necessary that it has to have a specific radius it can have any radius so in each case you are finding the length of this bd and dc equal look so that's one property that we have to prove so this is i've just explained it now how do we prove this so to prove this what we see is don't you see the two triangles opa and opb 
So isn't it the triangle's part that is to be proved equal? So just try to recollect how did we prove the elements of the triangle equal? You are given two triangles and you have to prove some elements of the triangles equal like the side of AB and PB of the triangle are to be equal. Isn't it through congruence? So you have to see which congruence will work out here. So let's tr try out here. So in this, tri this triangle OAP and OBP, OA and OB, OA and OB are equal. The length OA and OB are equal. Why are they equal? It is because they form, they are the radii of the same circle. Also OP, OP is same in both the triangles. Hence, they are equal. Also, the angle OPB, OPB, the measure of this angle <coughs> and the measure of this angle, they are equal and they measure 90 degree. So, we have three elements. Are the three elements required? Let's check it. Yes, this is one side. This is another side. No, sorry. This is one side. This is another side. And this is 90 degree. So the relation that we have, this is not SA, is this relation that we have is known as RHS. That is one angle is 90 degree. H stands for hypotenuse, which is this. And this is one side. This is the right angle that we have. So as per this right, angle, right hypotenuse side, the triangles are congruent. So once the triangles are congruent, obviously all the remaining elements of the triangle will also be equal. We are looking at the one particular element that is the side AB. So the side AB, the side AP and the side BP, they will be congruent. Hence, we have proved that a line segment which is perpendicular from the center onto the chord will divide this chord into two equal parts. Now, what is its converse? The next theorem that we have is its converse. That is a line through line drawn through the center of the circle to bisect it. This is OP which is bisecting the chord AB, then the line segment will be, the measure of these two angles will be 90 degree. That is why it is perpendicular. So again, the same thing we will have to prove in triangle APO and OPB, this side is common. This is the radius of the triangle and the two, this is the third side, which is given equal. So we have AP equal to PB that is given, that is given. And OP is equal to OP. It's common. It's common. And the third side AO is equal to AO is equal to OB. They represent the radius of the circle. So they are equal. So we get the triangle OAP congruent to triangle OBP. Now which congruence rule is applicable here? It is all three sides are equal, we are getting, so it is SS. So therefore, the third or the remaining elements of that will be equal, which says that angle OPA will be equal to angle OPB. We have these two measures equal, but we haven't got the answer to this chief state, that is they should be perpendicular. How do we get that they are perpendicular? We have this APB forms a straight line. So what will the measure of the two angles together be? Angle A, P, O plus angle O, P, B. Won't it form a pair of, are they not forming a linear pair? That is, they make a straight line. So the measure of the angles will be same, will be 180 degree. And these two measures same. So therefore, what is the measure of the angle A, P, O? Angle A, P, O will be half of 180 degree. That is, 90 degree which is also equal to angle OPP. Hence, the measure of this angle will be 90. So, we proved that a line segment which is from the center and which bisects the chord will always be perpendicular to the chord. Fine. So, we have the three elements now here. Center, perpendicular and the bisector. Any two combination has the third thing. So that's what I have explained in this figure. What is it? The center, if you take the combination of center, center and the perpendicular, that is a line segment which is coming from the center perpendicular to the chord will be bisecting. Is this figure clear? It will bisect the chord. Or if you take the combination of a line segment which is bisecting the chord will be perpendicular. The two, two theorems we have. And finally, 
these two combination that is a perpendicular and a bisector that is a line segment which is perpendicular bisector of a circle will pass through the center of the circle so these three elements are connected i suppose this part till this part it is clear yes ma'am now we move to the next that is circle through three points fine before that circle through two points okay, how many circles can be drawn through two points let me take this as a point a and this as a point b so they have made this line segment ab this is a line segment joining the two points fine that's a line segment which is joining the two points okay now, what we have to find is the number of tri circles that is passing see see this blue here light blue here blue color circle isn't it passing through the two points so that means ab is a chord for this circle likewise isn't ab a chord for this dark blue circle yes similarly isn't ab the chord for this bigger circle light blue circle so you find that you can always make a circle we can always make a circle which is passing through the three and the two points fine i have made another circle see okay can you see this the circle that i made just now yellow circle yes. is it passing through the two points yeah so how many circles i already made three i have made fourth hmm. can i make more number of circles yes so how many circles can be drawn infinite circles its infinite circles can be are drawn we can draw infinite circles okay, okay. okay. So we don't have one particular circle it is infinite circle that is passing through the two points now we move to the three points circle through three points now if you are given three points let ab be the two fixed point through which i have made the chord and i have extended this to locate the point c now the third point c since the three points are collinear where can you expect the third point b it is collinear it has to be on this line which is having this chord ab so wherever you take if i take c as this point isn't it outside the circle the c point which is lying on this line in the ray ab isn't it lying outside the circle so therefore what we find is the line joining c and the center line joining c and the center will be this is the center of the circle will be greater than the radius of the circle isn't this length greater than this radius of the circle mm. yes yes we have this as a radius so we find that this length oc is greater than r which is not that is you haven't got the point c on the circumference of it it should mm. be equal to r likewise if you take any point which is there inside that is between ab if you take c here so what do you find here i'll take this as c point so this length what is the length of this oc dash you find that that is less than radius mm. which says that even this point c is not on the circle that is the point c or c dash they don't lie on the circle do not lie on the they do not lie on the circle therefore is it possible to have a circle passing through three collinear points it would so we'll have to state points such that they don't lie in one line that is three non collinear points we have three non collinear points now how do we find a circle now what is required for making a circle you require a center and a radius fine so radius you will get when you know a point which is lying on the surface and the center is there 
So the first task is to identify where the center of the circle. So just now I have given one information that is perpendicular, center and bisector. If you have perpendicular and a bisector, you know that it will always pass through. It will always pass through the center of the circle. So to locate the center of the circle, what we do is you have to get the perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular bisector of what? Bisector means you will have to have a like segment length, particular length. Only then you can get the bisector. So that means we treat this as AB, the chord of a circle. Fine. AB is the chord of a circle. Assume that it becomes a chord of a circle because we are having A, B, C, the three points on the circle. So we need to assume that they are the chords of the circle. So we have this BC as also the chord of a circle. Now, what is that we are doing? We are trying to locate the center of the circle. So how do we locate the center of the circle? To locate the center of the circle, we we'll use its concept that is it's a perpendicular bisector. We we'll draw a perpendicular bisector of AB. So let this be the perpendicular bisector of AB. Fine. And we'll draw the perpendicular bisector of the other line hmm. segment that is BC. Yes. Where do we find they are intersecting? Wherever they are intersecting is, is the point of that is the point that we have as the center. Hence, this if this is the center. And we know that A, B, C, they are lying on the circle. Then the length OB will be the, this will be known as the radius of the circle. So if you draw a circle with O as center and OB as radius, it will definitely pass through the three points. Now see, I have made a part of the construction here. See, can you see this? Is it visible? Yes, ma'am. It's clear. AB is a chord of a circle. We have taken AB as a chord of a circle. BC another chord. We have drawn the I have drawn the perpendicular bisector of AB. So this is the line segment. This line segment is the perpendicular bisector of AB. Likewise, this line segment is the perpendicular bisector of BC. So where do you see that they are intersecting? Isn't it at O? Can you see this point O? Now let me see. Show you. See, I have taken this compass and kept this at the center O and then I am identifying the radius by passing, letting, getting the length of this O and B by making an arc on it. So this is the radius of the circle. You can very well see that it is passing through the point. So this length OB is now the radius. Now let's see whether the circle passes through the point A. See, is it passing through the point A? It is, ma'am. Yes. So and will it pass through the point C? Check. See. Is it coming through point C? Yes. So what do we find? The three points, they do line or lie on the circle. So therefore, the, this OC, OA, they are all of equal length. That is known as the radius of the circle. So that's how we make a circle. And it is always going to pass through. So the circle have made here, I don't think it is visible. So I think... Will it be okay? Yes. Now it's visible. It may not be possible for me to get the exact circle here. Anyway, I'll try to. Is it okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So isn't it the circle which is passing through ABC? So we have to identify the center and the center of the circle is always identified by Look, finding the perpendicular bisectors of the chords. Okay. So therefore, we have a circle. So what do we find? There is a circle which is passing. We have drawn a circle which is passing through the three points. Now, this is a theorem which states that there is one and only one circle passing through the three non continuous points. Now, if suppose we have another circle which passes through, assume that there is another circle which is passing through this ABC. So what information do we get in that case? What is the information that we get through that case? That is, let there be another circle. Let there be another circle passing through ABC. Fine. 
If that is so, then what information do we have? How do we say that it will be another circle? When do we say that it will be another circle? Only when, that is, it has different center. Won't it have different center? Let the center be O dash. So what is it saying? The two perpendicular lines, the two perpendicular lines intersect at O dash also. Now can a, can two lines, if you make two lines, if you make two lines, intersecting lines, can these two lines intersect at more than one point? Is it possible that two intersecting lines meet at more than one point? It is not possible in a plane. Hence, O dash is not a different point. It is the same point. This says that this is the only circle that can be drawn. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. So now we move on to the next theorem that is equal chords of so these theorems will be helping us to prove or solve the questions which are based on circles. Okay. So what is this theorem? Equal chords of are equidistant from the center. You have two chords CD and AB which are equal in length. They are equal in length. This length of AB and CD, they are equal. And then what you have to prove? They will always be at the same distance from the center. So how do we measure the distance of a line from a point? This is a line. We have a line. There is a line and there is a point, right? There is a point. How do we find the distance of a point and the line? The distance of a point and the line is always a perpendicular distance. Why is it a perpendicular distance? Because that is the shortest distance. You take any other point, you take any other line segment. I'm sorry, did it. I'm sorry, just a minute. Sure, ma'am. Ma'am, we've got last uh, three minutes left. I don't know why it disappeared. Oh. Huh. It's okay? Yes. Okay. So if you take any other point mm -hmm. and make a line segment, you'll always find that this line, these lines, they are always going to be greater than this. This is the shortest distance that we have. So the shortest distance measures the perpendicular distance. So we have to prove that this is equal, this, this is given equal, that is they are at equidistant from this, that is OP is equal to OQ. We have OP is equal, uh, nay, this is what you have to prove, sorry, this is what you have to prove, OP is equal to OQ. What is given? Equal chord, CD and AB are equal. So how will you be proving these two lengths are equal? Obviously, see, it not it the triangle that is seen in it, OPD and OQB? So they form the part of the triangle. So we need to prove that the elements of these two triangles are equal. Let us look for the elements OD and OP. OD and OB are equal. Why are they equal? They form the radius of the circle. So they are equal. They are equal. Okay. Now PD is equal to OQ. Given to us, it's OQ. Given to us because they are and equidistant from the equal chords are given. PD is equal to AB, CD and PQ. A, oh, oh, this is also wrong. AB and CD are equal. So mm. half their length will also be equal. Which says that QB will be equal to PD. And angle OPD, OPD and OQB, they will also be equal in measure because they are the perpendicular distance from the center. So their measures are 90 degrees. Hence, the two triangles are congruent. Again, by which rule will the two triangles are be congruent? One side is equal, hypotenuse is equal, this is hypotenuse which is equal, one side is equal and one angle measures 90 degrees. Okay. The triangles will be congruent. Hence, the third side that is OP will be equal to OQ. This is what you had to prove that they are at an equal distance from the center. Sure. Right? All right. Yes. So, um, we have got a better idea of the theorem. You have cleared it uh, by solving this equation. Thank you so much, ma'am, for being with us and uh, for uh, taking out time for this session. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you to all our viewers for watching this program and now I'm sure that you have understood the concept of circles a little better. If you haven't, then watch it again on NCRT official. The first part and the second part both are related to each other. We're wrapping up this particular program, but coming up next is an online training and the topic is let's be a cyber warrior. Thank you so much once again. Take care. Namaskar.